Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, welcome back to our Comme d'Archi summer series dedicated to color. In this final episode, we'll be talking about the color gray. This is Esther, and I will be reading a synthesis written by Anne Charlotte. What an idea to close the cycle of the Northern Hemisphere's summer season with grey. On the eve of the start of the new school year, when, on the contrary, we would so much like to retain the sun to keep it at its best, and on the verge of returning to our daily routine, which will inexorably lead us to the French winter grey, here in Paris at least. But although it is often synonymous with loneliness, sadness, monotony and melancholy, Grey is a perfect neutral color for highlighting all the tones. It is sacred in Eastern countries. It is above all sober, from slate grey to pearl grey via mouse or elephant grey. What elegance! Christian Dior wrote in 1946, everything goes with grey. It is the grey of the zinc roofs of Paris. It is the color of concrete. Sometimes superb, from the wax concrete of a kitchen countertop to the grey changing under the light of the corn cobs of Burton Goldberg's marina in Chicago. Sometimes horribly depressing, as far as the eye can see, monotonous architectures of the urban sprawl, those two mineral and especially ugly architectures, embodying the sad lobby of French concrete. It is also, by contrast, the slate grey turning blue of the superb seaside roofs of French Brittany, struck by the winds and sprinkled with sunshine as well as rain, at the bend of a rainbow. There are as many nuances at the heart of the history of modern architecture. From Le Corbusier to Tadao Endo, via the Perret brothers, Louis Kahn, Oscar Niemeyer and many others. To talk about grey and concrete, among all the examples around the world, I remember the Marina City project by architect Bertrand Goldberg, along the Chicago River, in the heart of the mythical city of Illinois, Chicago, USA. It was delivered in 1964. This is probably because the shape of its twin towers transcends the material of concrete. When they were delivered, they were the tallest residential towers in the world, raising up to 179 meters. In ordinary architecture, unconsciously, concrete often cuts off from nature. By its strong minerality, by its standard fields, by its thicknesses. The corn cobs of Marina City, as they are called, are a metaphorical interpretation of the plant in their own reinforced concrete structures, Circular with honeycomb slab of controlled thickness, intellectually reconciling the mineral and the plant. The two reinforced concrete towers are designed around a 35 foot diameter structural and vertical circulation core that allows for an even distribution of residential units on each floor. The cylindrical tower design creates 360 degree views of the second city while serving as a structural stabilizer against Chicago's high winds, says the architects. The towers were initiated by the promoter William McFetridge, president of the Building Service Employees International Union. In 1959, the latter entrusted Burton Goldberg with the design of this complex, which was supposed to slow down the urban exodus from Chicago. Since the early 1960s, the natives were tired of the dense, overcrowded living conditions, fleeing to the suburbs in search of a more open and less aggressive way of life. The original programming within the towers is surprisingly comprehensive, demonstrating that all the benefits of suburban living can be found in the heart of the city, with the added benefit of proximity to the workplace. 
A theater, a gym, a swimming pool, an ice rink, a bowling alley, shops, restaurants and a private marina are available for the residents. The first 19 floors of each tower correspond to a spiral car park. The 20th floor is a storage area and laundry services for the residents. The remaining 40 floors house the 450 residential units, 900 in total for the whole operation, from studios to three-room apartments. The plan of each unit forms a single radius that opens onto the city. The absence of sharp corners opens up the floor plan of each flat, making it possible to move from one space to another with fluidity. The programming has changed significantly over time, with the theatre being transformed into a house of blues, the office annex now housing a hotel and the units being converted into luxury condominiums. As for the grey concrete of Marina City, it has been doing its job for nearly 60 years and does not put off anyone. Today, the flats in the marina, a stone throw from the loop, are among the most sought after in Chicago. Marina City is an optimistic vision embodied in steel and reinforced concrete, a positive vision for the city, an optimistic view of humanity and the future, says Jane Pike in 2016. You don't get many chances in life to live in the very heart of such a powerful idea. There is no denying that we shape our world and it shapes us in return. How could I think of living anywhere else? Thank you, dear listeners. Even if sometimes we have to see life in grey, let's see it in pearl grey to go through the winter with gentleness and refinement. And before that, we still have the autumn with its flamboyant colours. By the way, see you next week for a new season of Comme d'Archie, season 3, which we hope will be abundant and full of grey matter. This was Esther for Anne Charlotte. Goodbye, and until then, take care of yourselves. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comme d'Archi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.